Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introduce, introducing Asterix. Uh, last time around, Matthias promised that we would actually test our configurations for the Asterix uh, AMI. So it's the moment of truth. Matthias, are you going to give it a crack? It will work. It will work. For you're, sure. You're very confident. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, we will try to access the Asterisk AMI now with a Telnet, which mm -hmm. is the easiest way. You just can do this if it's unencrypted because Telnet just does no encryption at all. Okay. Uh, be careful, I mentioned this a lot. I think over the last two episodes, I think you've, you've mentioned it quite a lot, that yeah. this is not yeah. necessarily the safest thing to be doing. Yes. <laughs> so, we are not responsible for your systems. So, <laughs> yeah. be careful. Um, we just do it. Go for it. Um, now, first idea is this is the asterisk server is the same server where we are accessing the asterisk AMI, so we have not a remote server, so we just can do something like this, telnet. And now I make a mistake, <laughs> <laughs> and then you will see what happens. Uh, the port is 5038, and then the asterisk call manager says hello. Um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no. What happened now is um, that the AMI says hello, okay. and we can talk to the AMI now. Okay. Normally you would do this in a program, you would use the libraries mm -hmm. for your preferred language, as yep. I told you mm -hmm. already, but here you can see how it really works. Um, now the connection is just closed again or nothing happens. Right. We can see this, you just log in there, if you just type return, uh, that means if you just t press return like this, then it means my command is complete. Okay. And because the command is empty, it says error missing action in request. Okay. So I can type in some actions now. Um, and I can read everything mm -hmm. um, from, this, uh, from the AMI, but you have to understand something. Uh, you are just locked into it. Mm -hmm. Um, IP-wise, so you're connected to it, you're not logged into it, this was wrong, you're just connected to it, and now first thing you have to do is to authenticate, because otherwise everybody yeah. could connect to the system. Okay. I will show you this. So I connect here, now I do a call, and I can see nothing. I'm so busy. Yeah. Great. You can see nothing. I did something with the asterisk server, but you can see nothing. That's why you are not this, that's because you're not authenticated. Okay. And the next important thing to understand is that you can open the port and you can open the asterisk AMI because it's bound to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 so everybody can access it. Right. And then you could ask, we permitted only my local network. How could this be? Because this is only connected to your user. So if you try to authenticate, uh -huh. then it checks, aha, uh -huh, Matthias wants to authenticate mm -hmm. and he's not part of the network. So there are two security layers. Uh -huh. The one is which address you are using for binding and mm -hmm. maybe your firewall allows to access the port and the service at all. Okay. And the other security layer is you are already connected. You want to log in uh -huh. and then it permits your login from that IP address or not. Okay. And we can see something interesting. Um, I said, allow Matthias from um, my local IP address, but now I just collect to localhost. If I connect to localhost, it uses my localhost IP address, which is not from my network, of but course, yeah. from the localhost mm -hmm. network. And then, I log in with Matthias and it should fail now because I'm from the wrong network now. Okay. Just to prove that, that the, the ACL works. Okay. Um, first thing I have to say, action. Action is login. Uh, I was not fast enough. Again, action, login. Username Matthias Secret 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then it takes a while. I have to send the return again. And then it says authentication 
failed. So it's important after the last enter you hit, mm -hmm. hit it again to send a new line without any content. Okay. And then it, uh, this is the signal that this is the end of your command set. And uh -huh. then it tries to do so. Okay, so double tap enter. Yes. Okay, gotcha. This did not work um, because I used the wrong IP address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do this again. And now I use not the local host. I use the IP address of the asterisk system, which is this one, uh, from my local network. Same thing, and I say action, login, username Matthias, and secret Now you can see the response success, authentication accepted, and I'm logged into the system now. Now we can do something, we can do a, a dial, like this, and now we can see all the messages. So you could see new state call James is ringing, then James can answer or um, Please leave your message yeah. after the tone. When I was done, too hang slow up again, or you press can see the pound key. Happens. RTP, everything, you can see everything which happens on the system in detail. Maybe this is too much <laughs> to understand. <laughs> um, but the point is, you can read everything now because you said we are allowed to read mm -hmm. everything and now we really get everything. So every single step we can read there and not only what we could read, read from the asterisk CLI, mm -hmm. uh, we did this in many videos, just go to the asterisk CLI and see what happens in the dial plant. Yeah. But you have many, many more information there. And also this is much more, uh, it gives you a much better overview than the CLI. The CLI has a, quite a lot of yes. clutter. Yes, true. But for a hu for, that's true for a human, maybe mm -hmm. the CLI is more convenient because it's colored and <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, it's only the dial plant. Um, if you have a, a heavy load on the system, you can, as human, you can not read no. what's going on in the asterisk AMI. Mm -hmm. But what do you do normally? Normally you connect your um, software which you've mm -hmm. written and then you just read all the events automatically mm -hmm. and then you say to your software, if there is an event like blah, then do, I don't know. Okay. So you just wait for events or you just add new events in there. Okay. So that's the basic functionality of the asterisk AMI. Okay. Type in some actions and read what's going on on the system. Cool. So are we going to go further in AMI or? I think so. Um, we will do, uh, we will try to make our first command, which is not a login because okay. it's boring. <laughs> okay. Fair and um, we will see, maybe we do something about how you can secure it. Uh, how you can secure it. Maybe I told you already what are the important <laughs> steps. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna leave this one up to the viewers. Yes. If they vote for securing the AMI on uh, idea scale, then we'll do it. If they don't, then... Yes. I think that's fair, isn't it? That's fair. Okay, good, there you have it. Uh, so next time around, we'll be back with a bit more on the Asterix ma Manager interface. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Until then, See goodbye. You.